Welcome back to Marketing Schmarketing, the official podcast of AMA Las Vegas, where we talk about current events and talk about everything under the sun that has to do with marketing. I'm Shahab Zagari, local filmmaker, and I'm here with my co-host, Karen Michaels, the social butterfly group. <laughs> Yay. And we actually do have a guest today. Karen Alonzo is with us. Hello. Hi there. It's the, the incoming or it's I guess good current Karens. president of AMA. <laughs> yeah. What's worse than one Karen on a podcast? We got Woo! two. Luckies. That's what I say. <laughs> Shahab is the podcast manager tonight. <laughs> well, as you know, listeners, thank yes. you so much for hopping into this episode. As you know, we start everything off with a win of the week. So Karen Michaels, let's start with you. Oh, fun. I'm so this is in my other life. I have several lives. I was just signed as a singing pianist with a Los Angeles agent, talent agent. Wow. So I'm super excited. I think, you know, I do that kind of work here in Vegas and I work with mm -hmm. Peter sometimes, Peter Rad, our amazing guy here. And and so now I, I have that for like the Western region of the United States. No, that's States. amazing. I'm super excited. You know, those yeah, agents, it, well, it, it, the more money you make, the more money they make. So it, you know what I mean? It yes. kind of, that's oh, amazing. Yes. Congratulations. Thank that's you. Huge. Congratulations, Thank Karen. You. That's so awesome. Happy. Thank you so much. How about you, mm -hmm. Madam President? Do you have a win of the week? And it doesn't have, it doesn't have I to be did. something of yours. It can be anything, but yeah, go ahead. No, I do have a win and it's very important to me. So four months ago, I joined the team at the United Way of Southern Nevada as their VP of marketing. So I was working for a fundraising consulting firm for Fort this side. So I've been in the nonprofit world my entire career, but now that I'm in it for the United Way of Southern Nevada, if you know anything about them, we tend to give away money to other nonprofits, right? So we go through this really intense grant application process every year we review them and then we select who we're going to be funding so we actually just announced the 43 nonprofits that we're funding this 43. year and 43 that we're funding and then the really yeah. fun part of that is not only supporting these nonprofit organizations but we actually started just this week to go visit all 43 of them where we get to go, we get to meet their teams. And then, but it's like local, we right? So it's like everyone in this city. Local. Okay. In Southern Nevada, but mm -hmm. yes, a lot of, you know, Vegas, Henderson, surrounding areas, but we get to go in, meet the people that they're serving. So on Monday, I went to Candle Lighters Childhood Cancer Foundation, learned about the great work that they're doing. And then the money that we're giving them is specifically going towards rent and mortgage mm. assistance. If you've got a kid with cancer, you have to quit your job. You can't work and take care of your child just to see that costs. impact. I mean, the whole thing. Exactly. So all those bills are going to start adding up. So for us to be able to actually provide that funding to help people pay their mortgage, pay their rent. And it's just like one is life changing. Yeah. Today, our team went to, it's called Lighthouse Charities, and they serve refugees, oh, right? Gosh. So they help, they help these female refugees with, you know, learning the language, learning skills so they could get jobs here and create a life for themselves. And it was just amazing to hear. I think we, we heard from three people from the Congo, wow. and they wow. literally lived in refugee camps, one person for 27 yes. years eight years, 10 years living in a tent. And they finally had this opportunity to come to America. It's just like, I can't believe that this is my job that I get paid to do because it's the most rewarding thing in the world. So that was a very long winded way of saying my job is yeah, my win. I'm, I'm having that, an amazing that, time. You know, I, that literally brought tears to my eyes. Mm -hmm. That's heart <laughs> amazing and life changing. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, wow. Yeah, and, and, and I would, yeah. She's I would, our president, well, Shahab. And she's our president. I mean, that's just so inspirational and amazing. Real quick before I get into my win, if you know something like mm -hmm. that is kind of interesting to you, there was a fictional film that came out a few years ago called Limbo, and it's oh. about these refugees who are in a refugee camp on an island off the coast of Scotland. And that's just kind of the limbo where they wait to figure out what country will take them in. Yeah. Such a great 
film. It was. Wow. It, I mean, it's it's beautiful. So I highly recommend it. Good Limbo. Time. I am going. To so my win of the week is this year, as a lot of you might know, is the ten year anniversary of my directorial debut, and so we just published a art of the film book. So it's hardcover. I mean, you could do you wow. could get a digital PDF if if you didn't want to spend the. Uh, exit through the gift shop price, but it's, you know, high quality photograph paper, hardcover, and it's got the storyboards, it's got the character designs, it's got the f set photos. I mean, we have mm. everything that went into making that film in mm -hmm. 150 pages. And I'm so happy that we were able to put that together and kind of share that with the world. So that's a huge win. But there was a win that we got today, and I think we should talk about it. <laughs> There's a website called feedspot.com mm -hmm. and they have, you it's know, a resource page for Vegas, right? Exactly. Well, and I think, I think they, they have different cities as well. Right. Absolutely. But we ended up on the Las Vegas podcasts and it's like this list of the top podcasts, right? Yes. First of all, I didn't know Vegas had 70 plus podcasts. That was That's amazing. To quite see. insane. I, I only listen to ours and CityCast Vegas and <laughs> I've, I've got my work cut out for me. But the fact that we ended up on this list and ended up at number 23. I mean, we are I mean, honored. <laughs> not quite as inspirational <laughs> as United Way, but no, it's a win. You guys are amazing. I listen to the podcast all the time. I want Others do. I want I want it to keep growing. So keep doing what you're doing because it's fabulous. Thank you, Karen. And you know what I wanted to say, Shahab, is and Karen will supply us with all this, but any time that we talk about such relevant topics as that, we will be putting that information in our description. And you're gonna hear me say that a few times, but that way if you want to donate or help we'll have the links and the resources for you to do that. And then of course we'll be putting in links to other helpful things. And, and of course we want you to join the AMA Las Vegas. And so that link will be. In and if you're a nonprofit, you know, submit yes. next year to United way and you never know. You never yes. know. That's yes. Right. That's right. Love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Cool. All right. So let's, let's jump into, we have a few current event things to talk about today. Mm -hmm. um, first one is Barbie and Madam president, you requested, that we talk about that one first. Can you tell us why? Yes, because our September luncheon, September 7th from 1130 to one at Fogo de Chao is all things Barbie marketing. That's amazing, which is so, which is cool in itself just because the movie was so fun. Mm -hmm. But who do we yep. have coming? That kind of blew my mind. Mm -hmm. So we have one of our panelists, his name is Tom Wasalik, and he is the former VP of marketing for Mattel. And he worked on Barbie campaigns specifically in the mm. 80s. Cool. He created the cool. Girls Can Do Anything mm. campaign, which they're still yeah. doing variations of today. So he's just got all these stories that he'll share with us about how they develop the campaigns, the success of the campaigns, the transformation over time, some some press that they had to combat to, you know, say more Barbie is more than just a, a pretty doll in high heels, right? So they created business Barbie to say Barbie is a lot more than, you know, just wearing cute clothes and brushing her hair, right? So it was really just this inspirational empowerment mm -hmm. figure for little girls everywhere. Um, and he's just got so many incredible stories to tell that will lead us up to present day obviously the Barbie movie and what's going on with that. And did, did you both <laughs> also watch the film? I haven't seen it yet. We're going this weekend. I haven't either. I it. Before the lunch. Listen, <laughs> before the lunch it is so, you know, I, I, I don't understand the haters. I, you know, whether, regardless of where you sit on which aisle of which, whatever it was, it was really cool because right. So like it's, it's kind of like the Smurfs movie where they, end up in our world kind mm -hmm. of thing and she comes mm -hmm. to this world it's not really a spoiler you see it in the trailers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. assuming that because she was barbie she empowered the women of the human world and she shows up mm -hmm. and they're like no <laughs> you know so and so she's like oh she has this existential crisis and i think you know it's kind of what's happening with us as humans we're all we're having these crises and and you know thinking of each other but 
that's you know to tie it into marketing so screen oh, rant amazing. dropped uh, an article a day ago and it, it and the reason they did this is because you know one thing that everyone especially in marketing is talking about is million dollar budget for marketing Unbelievable. look at what happened this is what it did wow right you know but the one thing that you don't really realize is you know even think think back to like let's say here's another example pulp fiction okay that production budget but they had like a 17 million dollar marketing budget mm -hmm. right and so mm -hmm. a lot of these hollywood movies they already have marketing budgets that are in the millions if not tens of millions so this article was 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 it's not critical of Barbie's success. In fact, it actually kind of doubles down on it. Mm -hmm. But what they kind of do is they go, "All right, well, that's cool. Okay, so they had a 150 million dollar budget and it was one of the biggest in Hollywood, but guess what? A few years ago, Peter Jackson, who is the Lord of the Rings guy, right? So he made mm -hmm. such a cool thing that he could do whatever he wants. He did a movie called Mortal Engines that had a hundred million dollar marketing budget after they spent however much to make the film, and it kind of bombed mm -hmm. at the box mm -hmm. office. Right? Next one they talk about Avengers Endgame, two hundred million. That one did fairly well, but you know it was it was Marvel. Then you look at Mulan, a hundred million spent on marketing. Uh, they didn't really make that much money. So it t it's so uh, telling, isn't it? Because it, it doesn't, to me, the product still has to be good. The, the end and result. And the campaign, I would say. The product well, for sure, and the campaign. For sure. But I'm right. saying you can, you can put a hundred million dollars in behind a Pinto car, but you still got a Pinto, mm -hmm. you know? And so yeah. I think when, when brilliant marketing is coupled with a, a budget, and a product that is stellar. I mean, the the casting in Barbie is so good. Margot mm -hmm. Robbie, top notch. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. every every when you look at every single person. I mean, the to me, the, I can't wait to watch the monologue that America Ferrara does. Oh, That's yes. one of my excited. I can't wait for that moment. And so I think that, and and I think it tells us on a on for those of us with not one hundred and fifty million dollars budget, <laughs> it tells us that. Barbie is a is a worldwide known commodity, and yet they still felt the need to market. So, friends out there, as we're always all talking about, you have to continue to market yourself, your product, your services, your coaching, your whatever it is you're doing. You have to continue to market yourself. That's not weird or bad. Well, what I what I thought was interesting was the genesis of how this movie came about, right? So play patterns amongst children shifted. They're moving away from the dolls and they're moving into digital games, their tablets, Roblox. doing all of that. Exactly. Okay. So Mattel was not selling. Their stock started dropping and, you know, then enter COVID where there's supply chain issues and, and developing these products was getting very expensive. So they needed to figure out how do we revitalize Barbie and, and change the patterns of what's going on, enter the movie. And I think it just went gangbusters how they had over a hundred promotional partnership mm -hmm. deals, right? Airbnb, Burger King in Brazil had a Barbie burger with pink wow. sauce on it. Like this is a worldwide phenomenon this movie is. Sauce on my hamburger. Oh right? Yeah, that's crazy. That's brilliant. I, I love it. I mm -hmm. think it's one of the most exciting marketing campaigns to come out in a long time. And especially because yeah. Yeah. it's so positive. The whole campaign was positive and it wasn't mm -hmm. driven around what I would call the typical typicals, right? Which is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's sort of the, mm -hmm. those are, those are easy markers and nothing wrong with them. That's fine. But those are easy markers. But this one is <laughs> women centered and positivity centered and growth centered. I mean, wow. I, I also want to say you, you, you know, there, there's a certain amount of, and especially when you're, when you're talking to your clients and you're, you're pitching marketing, you know, there's one thing that you can't guarantee and that's that the campaign will be a success. You almost never mm -hmm. know. Sometimes oh, it's gosh. the right place in the right mm -hmm. time and the right, mm -hmm. right. And so, 
that's, you know, that's another thing to think about, right? So the pandemic, and so it was like almost like this perfect storm. It was. But, yeah. but also, you know, I, I think, you know, they doubled down on the nostalgia, right? So this yes. guy who is coming to our luncheon, he started doing these things in the 80s. All of the kids who had Barbies in the 80s, they all took their kids to see this movie. They all For went to sure. see this movie, parties, right. you know, all this kind of stuff. So, you know, that that kind of stuff you can't guarantee, but holy crap, it it, it really worked. And they, I, they knew their audience mm. as well, Shahab, to your point. They were targeting the people, you know, who grew up with Barbies. I had buckets of Barbies. Like, that's the generation I grew up in, right? And, you know, now it's all these women with kids bringing their girls to the movies or their boys to the movies as well. And there's the nostalgia factor, but they knew their audience. They appealed to the generation with the kids, right? And there's the nostalgia factor, but they appealed through the empowerment and the diversity and the inclusion within the movie, they appeal to the younger generations as well. They knew their audience. And I feel like so many times that's overlooked by brands is they're just trying to do something trendy that doesn't fit with what, with their brand. In so fact, I think they were very, intentional. you know, and I know you haven't seen it yet, but that, you know, starting off mm -hmm. the first time you see a young character in the film, she is so not enthused by Barbie and, you know, those young kids who are watching it, they're like, yeah, you know, I'm kind of, That's I'm kind of with her. And then when they, you know, anyway, so I'm not going to spoil it, but, and then again, Barbenheimer, you, you could not. No, have, that was just you, luck meets typing, right? So oh, right. For, so, and really for Oppenheimer too, because obviously that's the other film on our list to see. Thrilling. I saw, I've and, seen yeah. both. So seen they're both. both absolutely amazing. But you know, the thing is, is Christopher Nolan was pissed at Warner brothers because they put all of their films that were going to theaters on max mm -hmm. during pandemic. And he was like, you better not do that to my movie. I don't like that you did that. These things, right? Cause like when you're at home, there's phones and tablets and people and dogs and stuff. When you're in the movie theater, it's a dream. You are in it for two hours, right? So he, he that's kind of what he doubles down. So he left, he took Oppenheimer to a different <laughs> studio. And the wow. rumor is when they found out Oppenheimer's release date, they picked Barbie for the same weekend to kind to of like basically poke. steal from his audience mm. or whatever. I mean, it's, it's really not even a Venn diagram. And the internet went wild. Barbenheimer became, mm -hmm. a, even I did, mm -hmm. I did a trailer where I took the audio from Oppenheimer's trailer and married it to the footage from Barbie's trailer nice. and it kind of fits. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can check it out on my Instagram. But anyway, so that, you know, perfect storm, crazy, but still it's very important. If you want people to know about your stuff, you've got to market. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. move on. Before we move on, one last thing about yeah. Barbie. I think we have to touch on the fact that this is the second time in history that a solo female director grossed over a hundred million in the opening weekend. Especially after, you know, the film world mm -hmm. were like, oh, Greta's, you know, moving on to fluff now. And it's like, you haven't even seen the movie yet. So mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously and, and what not. They, the way they took a trend and they actually made it work for them as opposed to, it, it's not a trend, right? That's the key is that all mm -hmm. this good stuff feeling isn't a trend. It's, it's how we are moving. It's great. Great stuff. Right. Totally. Now we so can now on. we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, this is kind of a hot topic because it's so new and it's so fresh. AI, we're going to talk about AI marketing mm. and, you know, what you can and can't do, what you should and shouldn't do. So Forbes came out with an article on August 17th, how AI marketing makes some firms dumber and others far <laughs> smarter. And there's, you know, there's, you know, some pros and cons that they kind of go through, mm -hmm. but the interesting part of this article is using non-obvious yet meaningful ways to use AI, right? So a couple of the examples, digital innovation agency rehab created AI tools that takes real time user comments from social media to create um, 
insights and creatives based on those. I mean, that's just huge. I mean, obviously people love it when that's a you know, they see their yeah. posts on the official thing, right? Yep. The same company also creates virtual AI personas to test creative for real target user reactions. So we all know about A-B testing, right? So you're going to do an ad on Facebook and you've got three different images, mm -hmm. you've got three different headlines and which one's going to do better, right? And then depending on which one does better, then you take put the money, money and that. kind of, you know, put it all on that one yeah. instead of wasting that money and time. putting it in front of AI <laughs> and getting mm -hmm. those reactions and then spending all the money. Netflix uses AI currently to optimize thumbnails on movies, right? So depending on the things that you've watched, it might show you, you know, Margot Robbie on the poster. It might show you, you know, Ben Kingsley or whatever, depending on who you are and what you've watched. And, you know, thinking Gosh, about these rough. things, I'm not going to go through the whole list. You can look up the article, the, you know, and I'm going to die on this hill, but, and maybe we can link to this you sure. know, in, in the show notes. So last year, and this is something I did talk about in a previous episode, I utilized AI and created an you know, where me and my human collaborators work with AI collaborators just to kind of experiment and see, you know, where we went with that. And I wrote an article about the experience. And in the article, I say, you know, did what we, you know, when we did that, did we take a job away from a human musician? Did we take that away, mm -hmm. that money away from someone's livelihood? And it's quite possible. But the, the test case here is this. If you're Disney, hire the people. You need to hire those artists. You need to hire those people. If you have a $100 marketing budget every month and you can only afford to boost a few Facebook posts and that's your company, well, you, if utilizing AI as a tool and not as the end all be all, I think that's where we'll, you know, do, do good. Madam President, what do you think? I think, you know, I think it has its resources. And I was actually thinking about you recently because I was reading an article where they prompted AI to just spit out a script for a video. You know, let's say it's a nonprofit video that an educational piece that you want to go viral, right? It spits out a script. It spits out what the, the filming should be. It gives you a whole a directive. Yeah, and I'm like, for Shahab, the filmmaker, you know, well, what do you think about that? Well, again, I think it's great it as, for yeah, utilizing, utilizing it as a tool. So in that instance, yeah. the way I would like to see it used is you had already written the script. Then you feed mm -hmm. it to AI and say, give me your feedback. What are the, you know, because if you use it as the creator, you know, now you're going to run into plagiarism. Now you're going to run into, you know, I don't know, is that, was that really your idea kind of thing? But if you have the mm -hmm. script already done and you say, where, where did I go wrong here? Are there plot points that I forgot about? Or, you know, you know, give me recommendations that I think would be key. I think it's a great tool for brainstorming. Like you said, if you develop the script and then you develop shot ideas and then put it in there, it's going to give you things that you didn't already mm -hmm. think of. But I mean, it's also not going to be authentic to your brand if you just prompt it and, you know, just give it a few details. It's not going to be you. It's not going to be your story. But it's really interesting how far this has come and how far it's continuing to go. I have so many thoughts. Oh, boy. Us. They're almost diametrically opposed to. I, I, I think that you get out what you put into it. So I get very authentic feedback and in my writing because I load my it's it's prompt engineering right mm -hmm. I load my prompts so well that literally today when I was working on a piece the I call her Jenny by the way Jenny asked me is this would you like emojis in this because that's wow. I mean right because I've prompted emojis and use it I I haven't analyzed my all my previous writings and now I'm taking a lot of time more maybe than the average bear but probably not as much as people who are really that far down so in that sense it's extremely cool as a writer you're never looking at a blank page because there is always draft assistance and content ideas mm -hmm. at the ready mm -hmm. now the concern that I have is 
is more leaning and and it's obviously related to the strike that's going on in hollywood and that is yeah. if these companies can if i go and play piano and sing in a movie and they train the the ai on that and then they can create another persona using the information from me that I literally created the sound and the whatevers, the arrangements, the sound, mm -hmm. the performance, and then they only pay me one time. You know, that this mm -hmm. is where I get concerned deeply, so much more than concerned, such it, it's, it's really deeply, they're going to have to figure out that. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, but I am on the other side because I will say, listen, friends, if you think an AI can take your job, well, first of all, I'll go look up willowrobottakemyjob.com, which is a real thing. I've mentioned it before, which is brilliant. But also you, you need to jump in because the future is here and you will be left behind if you are not checking out what it's going to do. You will be left behind. And we don't want that for anyone. And like I said, you know, mm -hmm. I, uh, this is something I deeply believe in. The good people must use these, these brilliant innovations so that good continues. Because when the bad people get a hold of them, as they do, as they will, right? Just like, mm -hmm. just like a car. A person can drive a car like a jerk and speed and do crazy things, but we, we couldn't live without our cars. So are we going to dump cars because of the dumb people? No. And right. AI is the and same. And again, and, and speaking of cars too... This is not the first time automation yes. has taken yes. jobs, right? So yes. the, the right. you know, first it was the auto workers, now yep. it's the graphic designers and writers and musicians. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I kind of talk about that a little bit in my uh, article. We'll mm -hmm. link that in the show notes. Great. If you have, I mean, uh, seriously, email us. I would love to hear your mm. thoughts after you read that. We are kind of winding down yes. here. So before we do, though, I do yes. want everyone to remember September 7th, we're going to dive into the uh, world of Barbie marketing. Mm. Fogo yes. de Chao. We do also in September, September 20th, we have our next webinar, which for AMA members, absolutely free. This one is mm -hmm. Data Driven Success. And Ooh. so this is going to be a workshop by our very own Fernisha Hayes. I'm super excited about this because I do a mm -hmm. lot of marketing and I do a lot of, you know, stuff in web. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about this. So I'm actually pretty stoked about it. She's so cool. So she is so cool. She's mm -hmm. so smart. She's so talented. So she's Shahab just to piggyback on it. It's a two part series on GA4. So we got to know and love Google analytics. Then they changed it up on us. So on, I know. So on, I need to know. Yeah. On September. September 20th, she's doing a beginner GA4 tutorial. How do you set it up? How do you, very, how do you start? Well, and yeah. she'll literally walk you through the process. Mm -hmm. On the September 27th, she's doing an intermediate advanced course. So now it's, let's look at the numbers. What do they mean? How do you create customized reports? And she's literally going to step-by-step step walk you through this oh. process. And like you said, it's free for AMA Las Karen, Vegas Karen, I just want to say, this is the most brilliant, mm -hmm. this is your idea. Am I not correct about that? This was you, You're this correct. Is such yes, a absolutely. brilliant idea to tap into the well that is so many people on our board and in our community are so talented, so smart. And there are so many great, webinars coming up and if you're a member you can attend for free i mean that that's uh, that i is have one coming fantastic. up in november mind you on a future podcast probably. yes i know i have one coming up about storytelling karen's talking about seo and content creation so i mean uh, we have yours, big Karen? things i don't even remember i'm uh, i'm doing a welcome when for all mine? of them do you remember i <laughs> oh i thought you meant me no. karen <laughs> you're doing the intro thank god I'm doing the intro. Yeah, I don't remember when mine is, but me actually. You know you're doing a couple. It, it'll be on amalasvegas.com. So yes, listeners, yes. do yes. not forget. And Fran yes. and I are meet. Actually, we're meeting either next week. Yeah, next week to talk about our oh, plan good. and scheme good. and dreams. So yay, nice. it's going to be amazing. Very good. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks again for listening. Again, we'll have all the links in the show notes. Karen, times two. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's been so much fun. So great, Shahab. I love chatting with you about all these things. And Karen, what a what a lovely breath of fresh air in, infused into our board. 
And um, friends, be sure to come and say hello. I'm always at the greeting desk in the hospitality area and checking you all in. So be sure to come and say hello and get your tickets ahead of time so that we, I can look up your name faster and then we can have more chat time. It's super <laughs> and it's cheaper. Fun. Yes, and it's cheaper. It's cheaper, yes. Yes. Yes, buy online. Yes. All right. See you on the next episode. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Come on, rock on.